Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcasts. Today we're going to discuss how to do mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problems. So what we're going to work on is using dimensional analysis to solve stoichiometry problems that involve going from moles of one substance to moles of another. You're going to need your calculator. Let's think about our problem-solving strategy before we actually do some worked out problems. First, read the problem carefully. You always want to start with a balanced equation and list what you know. What are you solving for? What are you given? What mole ratios do you need from that balanced equation? Then you set up the problem. Use the correct mole ratio from the balanced equation based on the coefficients and make sure the units cancel out properly. Finally, you'll substitute and evaluate. Pick up your calculator, write down your answer, make sure your answer has the correct units and the right number of significant figures. Let's work through this problem. I suggest you might want to try it on your own and then listen to my solution. How many moles of hydrofluoric acid, HF, are required to react completely with 2.78 moles of silicon dioxide, SiO2, according to the equation below? Well, this is a skeleton equation. I've got the formulas of the reactants and the products, but it's not balanced. We always want to start with a balanced equation when we're doing stoichiometry problems. So that's our first step. Balance the fluorines. If I have one SiF4 on the right, I need four HF on the left, and then that balances my silicons. If I have one SiO2, I've got four H's and two oxygens on the left, so two H2O will balance my equation. Now let's go back and look at the problem. What are we solving for? What are we given? Well, we're given 2.78 moles of SiO2, and I want to know how many moles of HF I need. And we also need that mole ratio. The balance equation tells us I have four moles of HF for every mole of SiO2. That's the information I need to set up my factor label. I always like to set up my factor label x what I'm solving for equals what I'm given. So x moles HF equals 2.78 moles of SiO2. So now I need to think about my conversion factor with the mole ratio. I want moles of SiO2 to cancel out, leaving me with moles of HF. So I'm going to write four moles of HF over one mole SiO2, because now my moles SiO2 cancel, which is what I was looking for leaving me with moles of HF as the unit. So now I really just need to do 2.78 times 4, and I get an answer of 11.1 .1 moles of HF. I do report my answer with three sig figs because I had three sig figs in 2.78 moles, so three sig figs are appropriate here. Let's do another problem. How many moles of precipitate will form if 0.45 moles of calcium chloride react completely according to the equation below? As before, I've got a skeleton equation, all the formulas of the reactants and products, but it's not balanced. That needs to be our first step. Let's start by balancing the calciums. I've got one calcium on the left right now and three on the right. So let's balance that, putting a coefficient of three in front of CaCl2. Then I can look at the phosphates. I've got one phosphate right now on the left, two on the right. So let's put a coefficient of two in front of sodium phosphate. That gives me a coefficient of one for the calcium phosphate, which is the solid. And then I see there are six chlorines on the left and six sodiums on the left. So I need a coefficient of six in front of NaCl. So now that I've got my equation balanced, I can go on and do the rest of the problem. What am I solving for? I'm solving for moles of precipitate. That would be the solid. So I want to know how many moles of calcium phosphate I will make if 0.45 moles of calcium chloride react. All right, so sometimes just figuring out what the problem's asking you is the biggest part. In terms of mole ratios, we're looking at the ratio between calcium chloride and calcium phosphate, and that's a three to one ratio. So the coefficients tell us that there are three moles of calcium chloride for every mole of calcium phosphate that form. Now we're ready to set up our factor label. X, what we're solving for, equals what we're given. X moles calcium phosphate equals 0.45 moles calcium chloride. I need to set up my mole ratio when I do my conversion factor so that the moles of calcium chloride cancel. So the moles of calcium chloride need to go in the denominator of my conversion factor. So three moles of calcium chloride to one mole of calcium phosphate, that means the unit of moles of calcium chloride cancels, leaving me with what I want. So I effectively need to divide 0.45 by three. And so I get an answer of 0.15 moles of calcium phosphate. I had two sig figs in my value for the moles of calcium chloride. 
So I'm going to report my answer with two sig figs. Did you find this helpful? I hope you did. Subscribe to my channel, like the video, leave a comment. Study chemistry every day. That's how you get better.